Dave Ryder Day. We're putting together a whole series of videos on our lawn rehab. We're doing a video on detaching, which you're going to see today. Then we'll follow up with the aeration video, the core aeration, and then we'll follow up with the, the top dressing of the compost. But this is the detaching, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. This is a yard we're going to talk about today. Every yard is unique. So let me just go over what I'm going to look for here. I'm going to look for thatch buildup. I'm going to look and see how tall the grass is because a lot of times this grass gets mowed way too tall, especially in the summertime when the lawn mowing companies can't keep up because it's raining, it gets wet, the growth is insane. And then as it's getting cut, it just leaves a very heavy layer of grass that can't decompose fast enough. And the reason it can't decompose is because the conditions aren't right. It's too wet, the sun's not shining, and then it just starts to decay and create a fungus. So it's really important to get that thatch layer out from underneath this grass. When I talk about this grass, this is zoysia grass, not the same obviously that's running in the villages as well. It grows like a palm tree. It's very important to understand that. Um, it's all stalk, and the green is on top right here. So when the lawns are let to get too tall it creates a haven for the thatch to build up underneath here all your pests will live within that thatch layer um, mole crickets will lay their eggs within that thatch layer total mealy bugs all the worms they thrive on that thatch layer which is why it's super important as a first step just to get rid of the the environment where all the problems exist i can tell this lawn has been mowed very tall and left to get too long between mowings. All this dead grass is left behind from the mowing. Oh, I'm not saying it's bad mowing, it's just, it's just is what we look for. This is what we're trying to cure. This, this dead grass that's left laying all over the place here. And then it's just, it's very tall. So there's a thatch layer underneath there for the bugs to live in. Long, tall grass is laying on top. Here's another piece right here. This is exactly what I'm trying to look for. See all this dead grass laying on top. That has to go away. That will cause a fungus. It's a living area for all the pests to thrive off of. Then they can hide in there in the wintertime and stay warm. They don't die off in the wintertime. And also, when your spray company comes around and does their chemical applications of the liquid fertilizer, it gets absorbed by that thatch layer and stays there. It doesn't go down through that thatch layer and into the soil. It's very detrimental to the grass. So let me just uh, get it out of the way. I'll show you how we do that. All right, so now there's two ways that we can collect this grass and do a detaching job. One's very invasive and detrimental to this type of grass, and the other one is easier on the lawn and doesn't cause as much stress and much, as much damage. And that's that method that we have chosen to use. This mower, uh, a vacuum type of collection, we will go over the grass and get the bulk grass off. We'll take a, a big chunk of the grass off, not the final cut. So all we're trying to do is get all the stuff off the top and make it nice and even. Then as we're going around and working our way around the house, the part that we started at, because we have taken off all the heavy stuff on top, the lower grasses can start to stand up. This grass, when it gets to be too tall for too long, the green grass blades will weave themselves together and they create a, a basket weave. And it pulls itself down, and that's why a lot of yards that you see will have undulations in it, high spots, low spots, high spots, low spots. It's, it's, it's created a basket weave. So the strong suction of this type of a mower will, will take off the heavy stuff, the lower stuff will start to stand up. And then because it's got such a strong vacuum under here, there's two blades under there that pull the grass up. And then there's two more blades that cut the grass. So it's standing it up and then cutting it. You're trying to open up the areas down below to get light and the little grass shoots, the new grass shoots can start to come through. It's not being matted down and killing everything underneath there. This is a collection type vacuum suction mower. Underneath here, we can pick this up. This is the hopper. This is where the grass from the front 
get sucked in and blown into here. We collect it all up in here. Then we take it to our dump trailer and dump it in the trailer and take it away with us. It's not like a standard mower deck that everybody's used to where it shoots it out the side and it has an open hole inside. The deck seals itself with the grass so there's no air escaping. So all the suction is staying right under here. As I'm going over and taking the heavy stuff off the top, the second pass is pulling all that dead grass out. It just fills that up. You'll be amazed. We'll fill almost that whole trailer up with dead grass and the grass clippings from this yard because it's a big yard. And it's in pretty bad shape, honestly. Now that you have the gist of what we're going to do, I'm going to do a little demonstration patch right here so you can see the part that was done versus the part that wasn't done and the big difference that it makes with the, the suction mower. So this is the first list step that I would be doing. We're taking off all the heavy stuff. It's starting to stand it back up. I would do the whole yard like this from, from one spot to the other. The second pass is where we drop it that last quarter of an inch that gives the deck that great seal that I was just demonstrating a minute ago. And we're not taking off all the heavy grass, now we're just trying to take out all that stuff that's underneath there. All the dead material is down in there. It's down there. It just That's where the eggs are laid, the larvae live off of that. It's gotta go. Okay, that's the end of the first cut. But as I stated before, every yard is an individual, unique little being. I can see some tire tracks from the mower going the same way around the garden all the time. And then there's a couple spots in the backyard where it's kind of matted down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do with this, and I usually don't have to do this, but this yard's actually pretty bad. We have a rake, a steel tined rake that amounts to the front of the mower. So as I'm driving it, it's gonna comb the grass. It's not power raking it and tearing it all up. I'm just combing this grass to stand it up, to break up the weed. I'll go in both directions. And then I'll take off the rake. We'll go back over this again on the second cut. And it's gonna stand all this up and get all that dead thatch and that matted down grass to stand back up where it needs to be. That's a noisy, dusty job, but here's the results I want to show you. This area right here where the tire track was from the lawnmower, we raked it. It's not any lower anymore. Uh, it's just stood it all back up. All this grass right here is standing straight up. It's nothing matted over. Hopefully you can see that. Um, all the dead stuff is gone. You can go right down in the mud. Um, this one came out really nice. Okay, over here, this was a really stressed out spot that the customer was really concerned about. I did a whole raking area. We raked a lot of this up. There was types of grass in here that shouldn't be here. So what's gonna happen on the next process is when we core aerate this, it's already prepped. We'll put a lot more holes in the soil right here. The more holes we punch in the sand and the clay with the aerator, which you'll see on the next video, is that much compost that can go down within the sand and clay to get organic material down to the root system where it needs to be but also sand and clay compacts into almost like a concrete. Not a good growing medium for grass. So now we punch the holes in the sand and the clay, put organic compost down within those holes. It prevents it from compacting again. It makes a really nice growing environment for the grass as it's trying to recover and fill back in. But that will be part two and part three of the video series we're putting together for you about this lawn rehab work. Uh, part one is detaching. Part two will be the core aeration. In part three, we'll show you the compost top dressing. Video by video, step by step, so you have a complete understanding of what we are trying to accomplish for you. One last final step is cleaning up the mess that we make. It's a very dusty job. 
So it's gonna grab a blower. We'll blow off the driveway, the street, or blow off the back porch area, all the gardens, just to make sure it looks like it did when we rolled up. Thank you for watching our video. That's all the information on dethatching, which is the first step of our lawn rehab and lawn rejuvenation process. The next step, which would be step two, would be the core aeration of the lawn. We'll leave a link for that video down in the description below, or the video will be right over here.